This, my friends, is Cars Jeans Stadion and the home of Addo Den Haag. So, why Addo Den Haag? Because the hooligan fans in the north side burned down part of the original stadium in the 1980s? No, but that's really interesting. Uh, tr try this on for size. In their 115 year history, they've only won the top division title in the Netherlands twice in back to back years at the end of the Second World War. This is actual footage. They won 5 2. That's kind of crazy. Oh, and one more thing the global pandemic saved them from relegation last year. The Air Divisi season was canceled while they were in 17th place. They've been given a new lease on life. A second chance. A chance at not just survival, but to go flying. Like storks. Get it? <laughs>
part of the problem with that is our wage structure currently based off of our uh, transfer budget and wage budget that's available. The most we can offer is 6250 a week to somebody. So that really limits your scouting options. When we started scouting here, let me go to the, the player search screen. It had us tied to Holland. And I was like, that's, we need to go outside that. So I've, part of our transfer budget went into really, again, we've got so many contracts that were just signed. I, I can't loan those players out. I can't cancel the loans of the players we do have. We're going to have to make do. So this is more of the, let's invest some of that transfer budget into the scouting budget in Europe for next season or for the January window or something like that so we can build to it as we figure out what to do with our current batch of players. So we've gone from 44 grand total on the, the scouting budget to 591 grand. That has eaten up a big chunk of our transfer budget. So we've not really spent any money. Again, a good chunk of our transfer budget went into the scouting budget for future years, but we have signed two players. Yilton Diaz from University de Guadalajara and Leif Davis from Leeds. When I looked at the squad overall, we had a gap at right wing and we had a gap at left back. So let's take a look here. Yilton Diaz, Colombian, 28 years old, no caps of any variety. But if you look at the report, this is him. He's our best winger at, on the right. Not by a mile. Um, Ricardo Kishna is second, but is our best left winger. So that's why we needed a right winger. So that's the situation there. Um, he comes to us from Mexico, prior experience in Colombia. Not a ton of first team at the top level appearances, but he's got some. He might pull the average down just a little bit. Um, and because I think the average of the of the of the team we inherited was about 57 first team appearances at the top division anywhere in the world, but he's all right. And then at left back we've signed Leaf Davis from Leeds, 1.6 grand a week, which is um, his full wages. So we're paying all of his wages. 20 years old, no caps, no uh, under 19 caps or anything like that for England. He's all right. That's a resounding you know, thumbs up from the manager that he's all right. He's actually not even the best left back. Shaquille is our best left back, which might be a tad bit concerning considering Shaquille is listed as a center back. Doesn't really, I mean, he knows left back, but not really, but he's a center back who can also play defensive midfield. And that's where we're going to use him is in one of these two roles and then kind of backing up here. So we needed, we needed a, 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 an actual left back. And so that's where, Mr. Davis comes in. I want to point one more thing out to you. This is Robert Zinkles. We had a testimonial for him in the friendlies. Good for him. Emergency backup goalkeeper, 37 years old. Okay, you know, he's a little bit older. Let him see his contract out. See if he wants to be a coach, whatever. <laughs> My friends. If he gets used once in any league game this year, he gets a one-year extension. A one game clause? Are you, what was the board thinking? So we've pushed Mr. Zwinkels down into the don't ever use pile. Um, we've brought in a ton of players on trial, but this is kind of how I have us lined up. Currently in a 4-2-3-1, which might seem aggressive for a team that was in the second from bottom spot about to get relegated last season when they killed the season off. However, I'm trying to use our best players in their best positions. And the only one we're not really doing that with is Shaquille, who we are currently playing as a central midfielder on defend. However, he knows the DM pretty darn well. He could play a ball winning midfielder and it's just the positioning on the pitch that might be a little bit off. I'm not sold on it, but we, that allows us to use Ravel Morrison in the attacking mid. Now you could argue he knows the advanced playmaker, so we could switch this back to the 4-3-3. Um, but playing, I'm personally, if you're new around here, personally really bad at playing counterattacking football. So I like control, maintaining possession, and then pretty much slowly working the ball into the box. This is kind of what we've been working with in preseason. It's gone okay. This is a really tiny club, so, so ignore that result of 7-0. We lost 3-0 away to Middlesbrough. We drew during the testimonial with a late equalizer, 1-1. And then the rest of the results you can kind of see here. We're not going to be amazing. I think that's fair to say. 
one of the things I always like to do is go into the comparison screen under team report and also report comparison in case you don't know how to get here. It's going to compare us to the rest of the league. And in the general stuff, I don't really care about. If we go to all positions, it's pretty poor. You could tell, right? A, a below average in everything except strength. Goalkeepers, which again, I don't understand why it automatically clicks these. That's, I think, a bug left over from the beta. It should unclick those automatically. You can't even see our kicking. It's behind me. It's pretty poor. Reflexes, really poor. Handling. I mean, it's all pretty bad. Command of the box, not bad. Agility, okay. Everything else is not that great. De on the defensive side, strong with good pace and acceleration. So we can play a slightly higher line, and they are above average in terms of getting back. Now, positioning's not great. Marking isn't that great. So they're probably going to be chasing players. But I think that's actually, that's one of the reasons I went with the 4 2 3 one is our jumping here is pretty, pretty poor. Look at that. That's the average bar up there. Those gray bars. We're well below average. I mean, how bad is it? 16th in the league of 18. And so I don't want us playing a low block and trying to defend against a bunch of like floated crosses. We're not going to be good at it. So I think it's better to push us up a little bit, even though we've got poor, um, you know, marking and the tackling is average. The positioning is average. But if we have to chase a ball over the top, that's better than, you know, being 16th in the league at jumping and trying to defend those balls that are getting lofted in. From a midfield standpoint, we're decent at long shots. Our passing is quite poor. Our vision is poor. Stamina is poor. Teamwork is really poor. A decent tackle, you could argue, average, and decent decision making. Now, when you look at the strikers here, what do you see? They're darn tall. We have a six foot six striker, not the starter, but one of them good at jumping mm, at anticipation, decent at off the ball movement, below average pace and acceleration. This is another reason I thought playing long ball route one counter attack pass into space wasn't really going to be our game because our anticipation is pretty poor and our pace and acceleration are pretty poor. Like what are we, we acceleration? We are 13th in the league. So even if we could pick out a pass, which our midfielders are quite poor at, <laughs> and had the vision, which we're quite poor at, we would never catch up to the ball. So it's more of a let's hold on to it and then let's ping it across to a six foot three, six foot two, six foot six target man and see if we could do something with it from there. So that's kind of the plan. I'll walk you through some of our new coaching signings in next episode, but you can kind of tell from a coaching standpoint, we're actually not half bad. We started out with two extra coaches than were allowed. I don't know how that works. So we've been trying to fill up the gaps with the performance analysts and things like that. We don't have all our, all our scouts and all that kind of stuff, but we're figuring it out. Very quickly, I'm going to take you through some of what I think are going to be the key players this season. First off, yes, our, our starting striker is actually six foot six. He's three stars, but I think if we can take advantage on set pieces and in crossing, to get that 16 heading and 17 jumping reach into play, I mean, six foot six is massive. He also likes to wind up opponents, which I kind of love. He's going to be important. Ricardo Kishna, one of the best players on the squad. Again, I noted he was also our best right uh, right winger as well as left winger. Overall, darn good player. We're going to play him on attack. 17 technique, 16 first touch, 18 flair. His crossing is a 15, so he can pick out those passes. He's also six foot two. We have a bunch of relatively tall players, so we may work. Uh, the, the work for set pieces in as well. I do think and hope Ravel Morrison will be important. You know, he's he's been noted in the media because I was like, everybody's like, oh, Ravel Morrison. I was like, okay, what? Well, I, I don't personally know who he is, but work rate pretty poor, teamwork pretty poor, and that's one of the reasons he didn't live up to his potential and he's landed with Otto Den Haag. But I think he can do a job for us and we kind of need him to. Yilton, I think, just bringing it back, I do think he's going to be important. And again, Shaquille, who, my friends, is one of the tenured players at the squad at the ripe age of 22 is going to be important just because of one, his overall abilities and two, the flexibility he gives us. Like if we have an injury, he could play left back or center back. He could play DM. We're going to see if we can train him on a, on a central midfielder overall, a great player for us. Looking at the back line, we've got Pete here. Who's three and a half star, four star potential, 25 years old. Not bad. Six foot two. Decent as a central defender. And we've also got Gianni Ziverlun, who is a ball playing defender for us, is how we're going to play him. But he can also cover right back. He's kind of 
better in terms of the squad at right back, but you could tell his physicals are going to start uh, tailing away from us. So we're going to play him as the ballpoint defender, kind of captaining the back line for us. 1.5K a week, contract through the end of the year. We'll see if we extend, but I'm guessing those physicals falling off are going to be a bit of a problem. The only thing is the lighthearted personality. So captaining with a bit of a pep in his step with a smile on his face. I don't know, a bit of a whimsy. We've loaned Andre here um, from Villarreal for free, which is a good reason to, to, for our team to loan somebody. And we're going to play him um, not at fullback, but on a, on a, or not at wingback, I should say, on a fullback on support. Overall decent, but the concentration and composure quite poor. Obviously, he's only going to be here a year, and I think we need to find a replacement, whether that's in the squad or in the B team or the U team, which I will show you because there are so many players. In between the six for now, we're going to be relying on Luke Koopmans here, who's three stars, 26 years old, not a world beater. Sorry, Luke, if you happen to watch this, but he's all right, and he's not 37. <laughs> because of that clause on our backup keeper, we have pulled up Yuri Schundernvolt, I think. Um, who is a 20-year-old prospect. He's actually not bad. He's got three-and-a-half star potential, but I'd rather give him some game time, obviously, the one game, um, than, than the backup keeper. Now, this is our B team, not our youth, not our youth team. This is our B team. There are so many players here. So many. Why are there so many players? And some of them look darn good. We just need to give them a chance. Like Kane Seedorf here is probably the best of the bunch and could be our right back next year. We may call him up from time to time if there's a cup run or something like that to get him some experience and get him on the bench and stuff like that. Overall, not bad. But there are so... We are paying for so many players. Even if it's just 700, 300, 800 a week, that's a large chunk of our wage budget tied up in a B-team squad. Again, with pretty decent potential, but I'm a little confused by that, right? Here's another one. Uh, Imre, right? Four and a half, four to five star potential, pretty poor composure and anticipation, but like could turn out to be good. And he's only 17. So that's yay. But I'm, I'm really like, and then look at the, so many. Now, some of these, right? Like are, well, I've been using our, our senior team to get them some match sharpness, like the, the non-starting 11. So, but again, if you if you just ignore all the unavailables here, there's still a bunch of players tied up in B team and U squad, which is kind of bizarre to me. So what's our goal with this save? Well, we want to win a title or two or maybe three. And we'd like to win the cup that they've only won twice, once in 67, 68 and once in 74, 75. We'd like to get into the Europa League, and then the Champions League and see where that leads us. Maybe to national management with the Netherlands national team like we did with the Cabin Tealy save, or maybe we just move on to something else. But those are our starting goals. Really, our first starting goal is just to survive and not get relegated, which may be challenging. As always with a brand new save, if you can hit that like button, again, if we get to 100, I'll release episode 2 later today at 2.45 Eastern and 7.45 UK time. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Um, we're going to have tons of stuff coming on the channel. I've already talked about experiments, all that good stuff. And the names you're about to see pop up behind me are my patrons uh, that have been supporting me for so long. And I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So hit that like button, my friends, and we'll see you next time because I'm feeling storky. Come on, get it trending. Let's go.